Mitchell's old movie studio has seen better days. Once a thriving center of movie magic, it was now all but abandoned. Its grand sound stages and carefully constructed facades crumbling under the California sun. All that remained was the backbone of the team tasked with maintaining the crumbling facilities and guarding the priceless archives that still filled the studio's forgotten vaults. For Jack Riley, who had recently been assigned as night watchman for the Mitchell site, it was a dreary existence. Endless hours of solitary patrolling, occasionally replaced by the rustle of stray rodents or the eerie creaking of an aging building. But it was on this particular night, as Jack was making his rounds, that something caught his attention that shattered the monotony and plunged him into a nightmare. It was in the old movie storage room, a cramped and musty room littered with rusty metal canisters. Most of the reels they contained were long forgotten relics of the studio's golden age, their contents now lost to time. But one canister, standing alone on a dusty shelf, caught Jack's eye immediately. The faded label read, the dark circle, final cut. Jack knew he shouldn't touch it. As a night watchman, he was strictly forbidden to touch the studio's archival material. But curiosity overcame him, and he carefully removed the reel from its container, put it through the projector, and dimmed the lights so he could see better. The first images flashed on the screen. A deserted country road at night, moonlight casting long shadows on the asphalt. A car appeared on the screen, speeding down the road. Inside were four young friends, their laughter and chatter barely audible over the hum of the projector. Jack stared at the screen, frozen in place. He had never seen this movie before, and the unsettling atmosphere caught his attention. The car continued down the road as a dark figure suddenly appeared in the center of the frame. The driver swerved, the car lost control, and veered off the road. The screen went dark for a moment, then came back to life. The four friends lay motionless, their car smashed in the ditch. There was a long silence in the room, and Jack watched with bated breath. At that moment, one of the victims stirred. It was the young woman in the passenger seat. She raised her head, her face partially obscured by shadows. A chill ran down Jack's spine as she slowly turned and looked directly into the camera her eyes black and lifeless. The movie continued, becoming more and more disturbing. The woman's body twisted unnaturally as she rose from the rubble, her movements jerky and unnatural. Jack gripped the armrests of his chair, unable to tear his gaze away. The woman approached the other victims, and one by one they too began to move and rise, their bodies twisted and contorted. Jack felt nauseous, a sense of terror growing inside him. He knew he should stop the projector, but he was paralyzed by fear. The final scenes unfolded in a steady stream of violence and horror. The victims, now clearly possessed by some dark, malevolent force, pounced on each other in a frenzy of bloodshed and carnage. Jack watched in horror as they tore each other apart their agonized screams filling the empty studio. Suddenly, the movie stopped. The projector buzzed to a halt, and the room was plunged into darkness. Jack sat there shaking with fear, his mind filled with thoughts of what he had just witnessed. He knew he had to get out of there to report what he had seen. But as he rose from his chair, a sudden chill swept through the room. Jack froze, his breath caught in his throat. He felt a presence behind him, something dark and threatening. Slowly, he turned around. There in the shadows stood the woman from the movie. Her lifeless eyes stared back at him, and Jack felt terror overwhelm him. She took a step forward, her movements unnaturally smooth, and in that moment, Jack realized he was trapped. He tried to run, to scream for help, but it was too late. The woman's hands lashed out and grabbed him by the throat, 
and Jack felt the life being drained out of him. As darkness fell, he thought one last time about the damned tape reel and the horrors it had caused. The next morning when the day shift came in, they found Jack's lifeless body in the film vault. His eyes widened with horror. The reel with the movie, The Dark Circle, was gone, dissolved without a trace. And from that day on, the Mitchell Film Studio was haunted by rumors of a curse that had taken the life of their night watchman. But the story didn't end there. Over the years, the legend of the cursed film reel only grew, passed from one terrified custodian to another. Some claimed to have seen the woman from the movie, her black eyes and twisted limbs haunting them in the dark hallways. Others reported strange sounds coming from the vault, the distant echo of screams and the whirring of a projector. And every now and then, a new night watchman would be tempted, drawn to the mystery of the film like a moth to a flame. The result each time was the same, a gruesome death and the disappearance of the cursed film. Mitchell's movie studio became a place of horror and superstition and its former glory was eclipsed by the dark legend of the Dark Circle. To this day, the fate of the cursed reel remains a mystery. Some believe that he was destroyed and the evil contained in it finally put to rest. Others suggest that it still exists, passed from one unfortunate soul to another, doomed to forever replay its nightmarish scenes. But one thing is certain, Anyone who dares to watch a clip of the dark circle will be forever haunted by its curse.